JavaScript is one of the most popular languages in full stack front end and back end development. Now this is used to create beautifully designed websites. In JavaScript, validation is used to authenticate a user. Hi everyone, this is Shantani from Edureka and in today's session we will see how you can validate an email ID in JavaScript. Now before we begin the session, let's have a look at today's agenda. So first we will talk about the JavaScript functions and then we will move on and see what is validation. And finally, I will provide you with a step by step guide on email validation in JavaScript. Now before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka's YouTube channel to stay connected. Now before we get into the depth of the validation function, let's talk about the JavaScript functions. So the fundamental building blocks in JavaScript are called as functions. It is basically a set of statements that performs a task or calculates a value. Now to use a function, it should be defined somewhere in the scope from which you wish to call it. So this function definition consists of the function keyword followed by the name of the function and then we have a list of parameters to the function and finally the JavaScript statements that define the function. Now to validate a user a validation function is used. But first what is validation? Now validation is basically a method to authenticate the user. So JavaScript provides the facility to validate the form on the client side. So data processing will be faster than server side validation. Now it is preferred by most of the web developers. Through JavaScript, we can also validate the name, password, email, date, mobile numbers and many more such fields. So what happens here is that the client side validation prevents the client from knowing whether the form is OK before reloading a page. Whereas the server side validation is important due to the fact that client side validation can be completely bypassed by turning off JavaScript. So this was about validation. So now let's move on and see what are the steps for email validation in JavaScript. Now talking about the email validation, it is very important to validate your email while validating any HTML form. So the email is a string or a subset of ASCII characters that are separated into two parts by the at the rate symbol. Now let's see how you can validate your email with the help of JavaScript. So for that, the first step is to create your function for validation. Now for the JavaScript first we have to create our function. So let me name my function as validate email. Now for my function I'll pass the parameter to be input text. Now the next step is to decide on the format for which you are going to validate your email. So here you have to provide a particular format that you would consider to be valid. So let me name this variable as var mail format. Now talking about a valid email ID, it consists of two parts. Now the first part consists of the ASCII characters of uppercase and lowercase letters. You can have digits and then you can have certain characters like the dollar exclamation hash etc. And for the domain name you can have letters digits hyphens and dots. So here we have to create our regular expression to validate our mail format. So this is the format that I have specified here that is considered to be the validate format for the email. Now to explain this format all the regular expressions start and end with forward slashes and then we have the power symbol which will match the beginning of the string or line and the backslash w plus will match one or more word characters including the underscore. Then we have the slash dot hyphen where the slash indicates that the next character is special and not to be interpreted literally. Also the dot hyphen matches the dot or your hyphen character. Then we have the question mark which matches the previous character zero or one number of times. And then again we have to match for more word characters including the underscore and then we have the star symbol which will match the previous character zero or more number of times. The next part of the expression where we have the dot hyphen question mark slash w plus and the star symbol matches the zero or more occurrences of your dot hyphen question mark w plus which basically is dot hyphen character or any other character including the underscore. 
We also have the add symbol here which will only match the add character and after that we are matching for the domain where we will have the domain name with some pattern of user names. Now for the slash w2 comma 3 it actually matches the dot followed by two or three word characters. So for example for our domain names we will have dot com dot co dot edu etc. And then finally we have the plus sign that specifies that the sub expressions shall occur one or more times. And also finally we have the dollar again that matches the end of the string or line. Now once we are done with the mail formatting next up we have the condition statements here. So if input text dot value dot match the mail format. So what we are doing is taking the first condition where our input text or whatever we are taking as our input value is matching with our mail format that we have provided here. So now if the match has been found we need to have an alert here. So let me insert the alert or the pop up that we are gonna get. So once you have entered a valid email ID you will get the pop up as you have entered a valid mail address. Now for that we have our document dot form one dot text one dot focus. Now we will see what this focus function does later when we are adding it into our HTML form as well. Now we have to provide the return function which is return true. So what happens here is that I have taken the condition as where my input value matches with my mail format and as soon as the match has been found there will be a pop up alert saying that you have entered a valid email address. Now after this I will add another else condition. So what happens when the format does not match with the format that I have specified above. So here we will just add another alert. So for this we will have you have entered an invalid email address. So here I'll change it to email address. And then this is my alert for when it does not match the specified format. And then again we are specifying our document dot form one dot text one dot focus. So here basically we are setting the focus to our document. And this will have the return value as false. So now this is our JavaScript function in order to validate an email. Now with this we have to create another HTML form. And also we can use the CSS in order to style our form. So next we will see how we can use this JavaScript function in our HTML form. So here I have already created the HTML form for the JavaScript function. Now let's look at the body section of this HTML form. So what happens here is that we have the onload command in order to set the focus to our document which is document.form1.text1. And we are setting the focus here with the help of the focus function. Now for this form we have created an action here and all you need to do here is create the form where you have an input type and also create the button for that particular input. Now our input would be text type. So here we have the input type to be text and we have named this as text one. So this document has text one here. That's why we have text one and also we have created the form to be form one. That's why we have document dot form one dot text one and we are setting the focus here. Now once the input type has been specified here we have to specify the class or provide the input type. So here I have my class to be validate and then I'm setting up the input type here. Now I want it to be a submit button. So I've given the type to be submit and I've named the button as validate. And I have provided the value here. Now the next thing we have to do is specify what happens on click. That is as soon as we click on the button what function takes place here. Now our function in JavaScript is validate email. So we have taken the function as validate email and document dot form one dot text one. So it takes up this particular document and takes up the function as validate email. So as soon as you click on that particular button it goes to the validate email function and it does everything that we have specified here. Now the next thing that you need to do in your HTML form is to link it to your JavaScript file. 
So here I have the script part where I have created the source and linked it to the email validation.js, which is my JavaScript file. I've saved it here with the name of email hyphen validation.js. So I have linked it here so that whenever you're taking this function, it goes to my JavaScript and performs the action. Now the next thing you need to do is style up your form a little bit and for that you need to use the CSS. So this is my CSS file where I have styled up my form in this particular way. So what I've done here is that added a little bit of margin here and there added certain boxes given the background color with the border and just specified the design or how I want the form to look actually. So here I have specified the box where I would be entering my email ID and I have done the padding here with the width and the background color. I have set the background color here. You can specify any other color if you want and also the border as well. The next thing is just specifying the size of your input or whatever mail ID that you are entering. What should be the input value of all of that? So I've specified the font size to be 20 pt here. And the next thing that I've specified here is the background color of my input section that is wherever I'm typing my mail address and then finally how my submit button would look like. So I've just specified the size of the font here. So this part basically depends on you or how you actually want to style it. You can use colors borders margins or you can change the width of the boxes. You can do anything with the help of this particular file or with the help of CSS. You can either keep it minimal or you can add different features as well. Now I have also linked this in my HTML form. So I have the link here as form.style.css. So this is our HTML form that will build up the structure of the form that we are going to see while validating our email ID. And then we have the JavaScript function which actually performs all the function or everything that's going to happen once we have entered a valid email address or the alert that we are going to get once we have entered an invalid email address. And finally, we have the form style.css where we have used CSS in order to just add some extra color or extra style to the HTML form. Now, let me save this. Now, once I have saved all of these files, it's time to see the output and how email validation actually works. So, now once I run my HTML form, this is the output that I get. So I had specified the background color of this box and I had also added the margins. So this was just the styling part. But talking about the form, I had created the h2 tag as enter email to validate and then a blank space to enter my email ID. And then here I have the validate button. So this was my submit button that is going to validate my email ID. So now let's see how it works. So you remember the format that we had used here. So this is the format that's going to be considered as the validate email ID. Now going by the format, let's check out this particular email ID and see if it works. So this is usually how the email IDs are supposed to be. We have two sections in the first section. We have the information part or the input and then we have our domain section followed by our dot and then few more characters as well. So now let's see. So now once I click on the validate button, it gives me this pop up message which says you have entered a valid email address. So basically whatever email ID I had entered matched with the format that I had provided. Now let's try something else. So let me just write X Y Z N D hash dot C O and let's see if it's valid or not. So now you can see that once I've clicked the validate button, the pop up says you have entered an invalid email address because this particular email address does not match with the format that I had provided, which is supposed to be considered as my valid email ID. So you can see that with the help of this particular form and with the help of the JavaScript function, you can validate your email ID and see if you have entered the right format or not. So now you know how email validation takes place in JavaScript. So you have seen all the three steps that are required. You just have to create your validate function in JavaScript and then build your form in HTML and you can also style it with the help of CSS and with all of these three things together, you can finally build your email validation in JavaScript.
So this was all about today's session. I hope you enjoyed it and now you can create your own HTML form in order to validate email ID. So don't forget to let us know about your opinion in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!